Here I will tell you how to make a tweer for a transverse gasifier so that it does not melt and gives steam. A transverse charcoal gasifier is very convenient. No smoke, no smell, a car starts quickly even after half an hour parking using a starter. If you manage to get charcoal from a wholesaler, as I did half a year ago, for 20 cents a kilo, you will be a happy man. 1.12 kilograms of charcoal replaces 1 liter of gasoline in terms of energy. And if you add water, you drive almost for free at today's gasoline price. But there is one problem that is very difficult to solve the two year. It melts no matter what you do. I will tell you a little bit about my experiments and show Comrade Shakov's patent where an elegant solution is proposed. Let's go in order. The only long-term feasible solution without any manipulations with the tuyer was water cooling. The upper part was made of copper and water ran from a water tank. Why was it done that way? The temperature raised to about 1600 degrees Celsius at the tip of the tuyer at a blast rate of about 50 meters per second. The steel melting point is 1536 degrees Celsius. I tried to cheat fate and make a replaceable tuyer, for example, from stainless steel in my experiments in the distant past. I would change a tuyer at certain intervals. Here's what happened with a stainless tuyer after 20 minutes of driving. Its wall was about 10 millimeters thick. The tungsten carbides that existed in the form of nozzles on the market did not fit. They were too thin. It was too difficult and expensive to get a tungsten blank. Besides, no turner would lathe it. Try threading a tungsten blank. At that time, I found a way out there was a material that could take any shape right next door to silicon carbide. The only specialist in silicon carbide in Ukraine worked in the same scientific institute as I did, Doctor of Technical Sciences Godzera. He made custom silicon carbide parts that worked under harsh conditions as I needed. I made a mold for him, and he centered a silicon carbide tuyer for me. He is the only one who wrote a book about this material and worked with it. In our country, whatever scientist you work with, is the only one and the last one. This is normal in our scientific world. On ordinary metal, no matter how you process it, melted cindered ash starts to stick, and a tuyer immediately starts looking like a chimera covered in ash. But nothing would stick to silicon carbide. But, the silicon carbide tuyer was spitting out. That's what happened with stainless steel, which held the tuyer, in half an hour. The tuyer was spat out by the flow even though I had fixed it well. Subsequently, I designed special holders, but then there was no time to remake everything and later the 24th of February came. I've seen modern American works with a drip feed of water to the tuyer. But this is wrong. For everything to function properly, steam should be superheated to at least 150 degrees. Then water will be useful and increase efficiency by 10 to 15 percent. Feeding liquid water, on the contrary, deteriorates the process and impedes efficiency. This is how Comrade Shakov proposed to cope with it. He killed two birds, tuyer cooling and steam supply, with his one patent. I will soon show you it, but before that a few more words for general understanding. Soviet engineer Mezin also tried to solve the problem of the melting tuyer so as not to make a complicated water cooling system. In the north, the cooling system could freeze in winter if the water was not drained. He came up with the idea of making a tuyer from cheap cast iron by casting a huge billet with a diameter of about 100 millimeters. It was enough for 8,000 km of run or 25 days with 8 hours working day. The rapid melting of the tuyer was prevented by an improvised cooler located outside the hopper, which relieved the temperature more or less. Casting a new cast iron billet every month and replacing it was not what I would call fun. Engineer Shakov suggested pouring water directly into a tuyer. Water takes a lot of energy while evaporating, doesn't allow the metal to overheat, and adds useful steam, which saves fuel. It takes 800 watts of energy to evaporate 1 kilogram of water. This is much better than the air cooling proposed by Mezin. What kind of tuyer would you make? Write in the comments. See you soon.